Hi, this is Carter Musselman, and you're watching the Permanent Rain Press. Hi, everyone. It's Chloe with the Permanent Rain Press. Today, I am happy to be joined by Carter Musselman. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm so excited to dive into the new season of The Next Step. But before that, I wanted to cycle back a bit because you've been dancing since the age of nine. So what are some of your earliest memories of dance and what drew you to this form of movement? Uh, in terms of drawing me to the movement, I think music has always been a big thing for me. I've loved music since I was a kid and it's, it's something that I couldn't help but doing when I heard music. Uh, I remember dancing in the garage with my dad. He would tape down some cardboard boxes. I remember dancing in my basement, my living room, my bedroom, you know, typical kid stuff. And I think it's kind of cool that as a dancer, no matter what path we take, we all kind of start out the same way. Did your parents, like, were they involved in kind of like the arts as well or? Well, my mom was a singer and my dad was an athlete. So it kind of mixed perfectly and created dance. So I guess I kind of just turned out this way. <laughs> I'm sure like growing up, it, it maybe clicked when maybe your parents' friends are like, oh, Carter's into dance. So it makes a lot of sense. That was exactly it. We were, I was out with some friends. I think I was at a birthday party and I did some dancing at a birthday party. And one of my dad's baseball friends was like, hey, he's pretty good. You should take him to a studio. And then I did and I never really looked back, so. And that's kind of the perfect segue into the fact that you trained at Bojangles Dance Arts for a number of years. Like, what did you learn, take away from your time at the studio? And how did Bojangles really help you shape your craft? Yeah, I danced there for eight, nine years, which is crazy to think about. Um, they taught me pretty much all the basics. I went in there knowing nothing and they built me from the ground up. I trained in every single style that I can think of. And not only just techniques and, you know, uh, ability, but also mentally, they teach you things about the industry and how to pick up choreography faster and how to be professional, things along that line. So I owe a lot of where I am today and who I am today to them. And speaking of styles, do you have one or two favorites that you tend to gravitate towards? I definitely do. Hip hop and all street styles have always been my favorite and go to like regular hip hop, breaking, popping, locking, all stuff like that. Um, but I've also I also love contemporary and I've been doing that for a very long time. I like other styles too, like tap and ballet, but whether I'm the best at them or not is up for debate. Uh, but hip hop and contemporary are definitely my go to's and I hold those very dear to my heart kind of opposite like in terms of the music you dance to they would be quite different for sure yeah and with contemporary the thing that's kind of cool about that style is it has no set genre like contemporary means anything you want it to mean so you know it could be more lyrically it could be more hip-hoppy uh, and I've always found that really cool that it's very uh, self-expression based I think there was a TNS video where there's a dance generator. And that yes. was like, if we're talking about using, was yours contemporary with? Folk dancing, I think. Ballet or folk dancing, something. But folk and something contemporary. And it was very difficult. Because I that's one style I've never done was folk dancing. So I was caught very off guard. And they gave me no heads up. They said, we're going to give you a style. Good luck. I was like, okay. We'll see how On it turns the fly. out. That's what professional exactly. dancers have to do, I For guess. Sure. So they're just yep. throwing you into the water. Um, mm -hmm. To kind of get into the next step, I mean, before you joined the cast, I think you mentioned that you were a fan of the show. You've watched it since season one. Your brother's also a fan. Who were your favorite OG cast members and why was the show memorable for you? Well, the show was so big because A, it was Canadian. So that was a, a big thing for us. And then also, you didn't really see dance on TV or film like that. Obviously, you would see it in musicals and stuff like that. But this was a TV show just based on dance. And not only dancers enjoyed it. Like, I would go to school and my friends who played football or basketball or were into math or science, they, had, they knew all the characters' names and their backstories. They all watched it. Even to this day, when I go out with my friends and they're like, oh, did you meet so-and-so? Did you meet this person? Uh, but my favorite characters, I would say, are Lamar, who plays West, and Trevor, who plays James. And it's kind of weird, like, having met them now that I'm older and on the show and worked with them. Like, it's so odd to think that I used to watch them and be like, oh, I want to do that when I'm older. And being there is a really cool thing. 
Yeah, and I mean, you worked on Zombies 3, yes. so Trevor's uh, a lead in that. So, I mean, you did kind of come across him, maybe? Was yeah, like he, he had done some step? choreography. He does some choreography for the next step before. Um, and even just like through mutual friends, like we would see each other out at places or dinners or events. So yeah, like I'm, it's kind of crazy to say that we're friends now. You know what I mean? Joining the cast in season six as Heathcliff, or I think he more so goes by Heath now, which yeah. is disappointing yes. that he dropped the cliff because I think that yes. was one of the funny things with the Aussie riff, um, at least at the start. But you yeah. did know a number of the cast, like Briar, Noah, Julian. So what was it like joining them on set, having grown up, competed against them in the Ontario dance scene for a while? Well, it, it was it was really cool because the dance community is very small, especially in Canada and Ontario, especially competitively. Um, so especially as boys, there wasn't a lot of us. So Noah and like Julian and I were really close friends for a very long time. And Briar, I didn't know as well, but I had always competed against her. And, you know, she's Briar. She's like, you know, the perfect dancer, quintessentially. So it was really cool when I got to the show and they kind of guided me through everything and showed me the ropes and you expect this, do this, don't do this. And it's kind of cool now because now I'm in a very similar position this season and it's a very full circle. There was a two and a half year gap between filming of season seven and season eight. Obviously the pandemic was a factor, but during that time for you personally, was there ever any concerns or question marks about the show even being renewed for a season eight? Well, definitely that break was a little bit if we were, we were all very questioning what was going to happen. And because of the pandemic, that didn't help. Like the show started coming out pretty much as soon as the pandemic started. Um, but to be honest with you, I did not think we were going to get another season. I did not think season eight was happening just because of the pandemic and too much time had passed. And, I, you know, but when we were shooting zombies, actually, both me, Noah, Briar, Emily, we were all working on that project together. And I remember we started hearing some some rumblings about, oh, maybe there's going to be a season eight. So at that point, we all started getting very excited. And then they started reaching out to us to, for availability checks. And it slowly started feeling more and more real. And I was very excited because for me, I, obviously, I did season six as well. But I was a very small character in season six. And I really wanted to take my character somewhere and like have more to Heath than just being Ozzy's rival and his opposite. You know what I mean? I wanted him to become his own separate thing. So I was really excited to do that this season. I'm so glad that most of you like got to kind of come back and re reprise, rehash your characters out more. There's obviously the season eight when though campaign. Is that something that you talked about a lot with the cast? Like aside from the ones who you saw when you were working on set, like were you kind of all keeping in touch? Well, I think that we don't necessarily keep in touch the most. Like some of us do, like Noah and I are very close. Emily and I are very close. But for the most part, we're all very busy. Uh, but the season eight, the season eight when though hashtag, that started by Miles Dobson, and I was all for it. like I put that in every single comment section. The next step posted, that's gonna be posted. Um, yeah, I thought it was a really fun thing, and it kept the viewers wanting more and engaged and excited for hopefully something. And I think we as a cast did a good job of keeping the next step hype up as well. Like we released a lot of our own contents and um did streams together and stuff like that so i think we did a good job of of keeping viewers engaged in next step content whatever it may be even when the show wasn't going on we will be getting into spoilers very shortly if you are watching this interview please make sure you're caught up up to season eight episode 13 so going into rehearsals early 2022 actually being in the same room as everyone once again what was the energy like well, you think it would have been like a little bit awkward or it would have taken a little bit of time to get back into things. But no, pretty much the first day we got in there, it was like we were all family again, laughing, joking. I think we went out to dinner like every single rehearsal after. Um, yeah, like it really is family. And no matter how far apart we are, whenever we come back together, it's always great energy. And I love working on that show with those people 100%. What are some of your favorite behind the scenes moments from filming of season eight? Feel free to be specific. Okay. Um, in terms of offset stuff, me and the boys would go bowling pretty much every single weekend. That's something that we all found that we really enjoyed and loved was going bowling. So 
there was a little space beside our rehearsal area. So we would go there after every single Saturday rehearsal. And then even when we were shooting, if we had a, a weekend off, we would go bowling together. We actually thought about like pitching for our rap gift, getting each other like bowling shirts with our names on them and stuff like that. Um, but in terms of like on set behind the scenes, I don't know. I think we just had a good time working on choreo is always a fun thing. Um, hmm. Our very last day on set was really fun because we had everybody there. There was probably 23 cast, something like that. And then all the cast and crew and we bought in food trucks and beaver tails and the whole nine yards. And that was just a really fun experience. We would also go out to like Dave and Buster's and like just do fun things like regular people. You know what I mean? So that was cool. Speaking of bowling, who's the best bowler? A hundred percent, either me or Noah. But Julian, Julian got a couple rounds on us where, where he, he got good. But Noah has that little that spin throw that he does. And I can't do that. So usually it's either him or I for sure. You're like, I can't compete with that. But who knows? Maybe yeah. you just have to work on your skills a bit. A little practice. Yeah, I never hurt anybody. Uh, I can only imagine what that very last scene was. If there were 23 people, hmm, maybe a big event, maybe a big competition coming up. Uh, who knows? Emily, she's been doing vlogs. I've watched a couple mm -hmm. of those. So you don't only have the show's cameras in front of your faces, but you have Emily's vlogging camera. But it seems like everyone's enjoying it, having fun. It's nice to document those moments. Oh, 100%. And even like now that she's posted them, I go back and watch them and I feel nostalgic and I miss those moments. And that's a different camera for sure, because Emily is just her phone walking around and you know, we're just goofing off and being dorks or whatever. So I'm sure she had to cut so much of us just being like numbskulls half the time. So saying random things to the camera. Random that make no sense. So <laughs> um, unfortunately, Isaiah and Sage did not return as main cast for the new season. Tell me about their presence and how it was missed on set. Well, they had both been on the show for a while, so they definitely had a, a bit of a leader energy. So I think that going into the show, a lot of us were, you know, thinking that we were going to wait for like a new person to kind of take charge and, you know, lead the way. But I don't think anybody really needed to. We we all kind of just did our own thing and pulled our own weight and we came prepared to set every single day. But we definitely we miss those people 100 uh, percent. We understand that they have to go on and move on to better things and they want to grow as artists and move on to the next thing. Isaiah is working on music. Sage is doing an Amazon Prime show from what I understand. So very extremely proud of them and nothing but the best for sure. And I actually just saw Isaiah yesterday. So Okay, good. The Thunder Bros are not broken up. No, for, we for are not Earth. broken up. Definitely not. <laughs> And the great thing about this show is, I mean, if it goes on in the future, people always tend to find a way to come back at some point. So you can only hope that we get to see Henry and Summer once again. But in terms of your character, Heath, he had a key arc this season when it was revealed he was the A-Troop mole. When you got the scripts for the first time, what were your thoughts? I really enjoyed it. I've always loved playing bad guys or like the antagonist. So I feel like there's a lot more depth to the character compared to like the hero or, the, you know, the hero trope, because they're all usually the same. But I thought it made a lot of sense when they told me that, because I, I have felt like my character has always been a little bit on the quieter side. He's the new kid to a troop. Um, people don't often look to him for advice or questions or ask his opinion on things. So when they said that he feels like he's not being heard and that's why he's doing all this, that made a lot of sense to me. And I, I, I did really... I did really understand that feeling as well. Like as a person, I think we all feel that way sometimes not being heard, um, especially growing up in competitive dance where I was the only boy. Sometimes I felt like my opinion didn't matter as much. You know what I mean? So uh, I definitely understood it. And the writers did a great job of walking me through that process of how I was supposed to feel. Uh, same with the directors. Um, but I was really excited because I thought it was something completely different from what Heath would ever do. He was always been like, super a troop gung-ho and a troop till the end so i think that obviously he didn't want to hurt anybody but i liked seeing him be a little bit more sneaky yeah and being a little bit more selfish than he usually is 
he mentions, you know, it kind of starts with one bit of information and then kind of gets roped in and that whole blackmail situation. I think I was reading people just love the idea of a new villain origin story Yes, <laughs> yes. for Heath. In terms of with your writers, like, were you told before you started the season that this would happen or as the scripts kind of got released to you, did you find out more and more? Definitely as the scripts go on, you find out more and more. A lot of people didn't actually even know I was the mole on set. We didn't tell anybody. We wanted to keep it a little bit more secretive. So like a lot of people that were just coming in didn't know that I was the mole. And even some of the people on h room didn't know. We just kind of kept it secret. And I didn't, I didn't find out until a couple of weeks into shooting, actually. Like during rehearsals, it was brought up some things about my, my character. And then as I, maybe the last week of rehearsal, they said, okay, Carter, you're going to be the antagonist. So we're going to have to start choreographing some dances where you're not like a part of the group. You'll be away from them in this section, stuff like that. Um, so I knew a little bit, but they definitely kept us in the dark for uh, legitimacy sake. So when we got on, on camera, it felt more real. Yeah, it definitely adds that air of mystery. And, you know, leading into kind of episode 11 was a big one for you. Tell me about preparing mentally, emotionally, because that was when he actually had to kind of come clean to the group that this is what he was doing. That was one of the most terrifying days of my life. And I will explain to you why. So when I got the script for this the day before, if you don't get our scripts until the day before, sometimes a couple of days before, I asked the directors and our ADs, I said, hey, this all says voiceover ADR, me explaining that I'm the mole. They're going to do like a bunch of uh, rack focus shots, pullover shots, throwing back to when I was, you know, like sneaking up on them, stuff like that. So I said, do I need to know any of the, these lines? And they were like, no, just come in with this section and this section. I'm like, perfect. So I memorized those sections. I come in the next day. The director approaches me and she's like, hey, Carter, we're going to get you to do the whole monologue. And I was like, you mean in like an hour? They were like, yep. So I went into my dressing room. I put my headphones in and I went to work for an hour and I came out of there and I felt, okay, I, I feel like I did pretty good with memorizing it. But in terms of actually getting into the space, I have a couple playlists. Like I said, music is a very big thing for me. So uh, I have some playlists that really put me in the zone. And I, I don't know, I don't like to be around people when I'm trying to get in that headspace too. So uh, I kind of separated myself for a bit and tried to feel those actual things that he would be feeling. Something cool, you had Alicia join the cast this season as Tiara Bling. Obviously, a lot of the Next Step fans know her as Mocking Ariana 3 on YouTube. How neat was it to see her be a part of this cast? Because she has really championed and supported the show for so many years. I thought it was really cool because it shows that no matter where you start, as long as you work hard at something, you can end up anywhere. Um, she went from a fan with zero subscribers to the TNS YouTuber than to being on TNS this season. I think that's really cool. And she's not even somebody that necessarily focuses on dance and wanted to be a dancer on the show. She was just somebody that created her own path and got there the same way we all did. And I think that was really cool. And she's a, she's a very nice person. Uh, I've obviously done some interviews with her and played some games with her and she's lovely. Like she's done so much for our show too. I think that even the writers take into consideration some of the things that she says, because they do have some value. You know, she is a viewer of the show. And I think that was really cool that they took in her perspective. So you did get to meet her when she was in Toronto. Yes, very briefly. Because I mean, even though that her and I were, I was the mole and she was the, the antagonist, the real antagonist, we didn't actually do most of our scenes together because they were through a phone. Um, so that was all done in post editing. But I, yeah, we saw each other in the green room quite a bit. We hung out quite a bit, but she was only here for two weeks, I think. So not super long. Yeah, I guess like filming the off season and she was probably like she was in a lot of the off season scenes. So she was probably yes. upset. But uh, I mean, she also you meant you mentioned like kind of manifesting, doing hard work. She uh, works for CBBC now. So kind of getting to work with TNS content and guess the reference I watched your episode. Yes. I mean, those games are so much fun. You never know they what's going to be thrown at you. No, she did a great job. And I think she's very smart about the way she sets up her videos for her fans. Uh, she has great questions. She definitely does her homework. Yeah, I can't say enough great things about her.
Yeah, well, I mean, fans definitely do not like Tiara Bling, but Alicia, No, another no. question. Um, let's talk about the dances because uh, you've been in a lot of different ones starting in season six. So from then up until season eight, episode 13, which has been your favorite dance that he is in and why? To pick just one is very difficult for me. Um, I'd say my favorite hasn't actually come out yet. Uh, two of my actually my two favorites are actually in the second half of the season. One of them I helped choreograph, which was very big for me because that's going to be my first professional choreography credit. So I'm very excited to see that. Um, and the other one you'll just have to wait for. That's a big spoiler. Uh, but from the beginning, season six, my duet is obviously very fun. It's to uh, a very iconic TNS song, and that was my first dance on the show. But I think my solo this season. I really enjoyed when I am after I just finished coming out as a mole to everybody and I go to studio one by myself. That solo, I felt it felt very real to me, just dancing by myself with my hoodie up, nobody around in the dark. And I actually I said, hey, can I do this with my hoodie up and tie my hoodie up? Because that's something that I do in real life when I'm dancing and I'm going through something. I just zone up, put my headphones in. So it was really cool. They let me bring in like my own personal uh, life into it a little bit. It's like you stepped away from that room where you were learning your lines and you just went straight into the, the studio. Yes. yes. I think we needed an extended version of that one. I think there were comments. It was giving off like Pretty Little Liars A vibes. Yes, yes. And I was, the solo was originally very long and they did cut it down, obviously, for time. There's a lot of dances this season. There's a lot going on. So I understand but that was one of my favorite solos and Pyro and I worked very hard as one of the choreographers on the next step. And I think that the writers and the directors were very pleased with it too. I can't share too much. I'll spoil it, but uh, yeah, it's a great solo. And I wish they would, there would have been a little bit more and hopefully eventually they do release an extended cut a bit on YouTube. Which duet are you talking about initially? Was that the Heath and Winnie duet? Or? Winnie. Yes. You did my very, very first one. I think it was to tie to you, which is a Jiley song. So people definitely had their opinions on that when we did it. They were like, this is Jiley did it better, which I understand. I totally get, but uh, I enjoyed, I enjoyed the duet. Now looking back on it, I know I could have done a better job, but I have to realize I was also 14, uh, but it was fun. Yeah. I wanted to talk about um, a couple other dances. So there was the dance mania, Alice in Wonderland themed one uh was that one really fun for the cast to do and was there ever any question like you and julian as heath and ozzy had to be tweedledee and tweedledum like there's no other characters on the board for, for you to play yeah well that was actually choreographed by trevor and jordan so they did a great job tns alumni uh great dance and in terms of the costuming and the character picking i think yeah hands down once i think they probably picked that theme just for us to be quite honest with you because those costumes were next level. Like when they said Tweedledee and Tweedledum, I was like, okay, cool, cool. And then I saw the costumes and I was like, what the heck? And as a dancer, my first thought is, how am I going to dance like a four minute routine in this, this suit? Like me and Julian would finish a take and we would come off like drenched in sweat and we'd have to take like peel it off for a couple minutes and then, okay, shooting again, we'd put it back on and hop back on the stage. But it was, it was a really enjoyable piece. And the fun thing about me and Julian is because we've known each other for so long that we're cool to just goof around on, on set. And if they say, Hey, scrap all the lines in this scene, you guys just go at it. We'll do that happily. And I think that if it was anybody else. It would be a lot harder, but with him, it's, it's for sure easier. I was thinking all that additional padding definitely would um, oh. increase that temperature in there. Yeah, it was very hot. And of course you can, you know, assume with all the lights, like it's very hot. And then, yeah, it was a very full out piece. I remember we were like doing jumps and stuff and we were jumping off tables and, and they weighed at least 12, 15 pounds. So it wasn't light, uh, but I love a good challenge. So no complaints for me. Picking yourself back up off the floor because you kind of got the, the cold shoulder um, during the dance as well. <laughs> yes, yes. Him and I run into each other and we butt heads and then we fall over. I know it was, it was funny. I, I like, I love doing that stuff with him. We just get to goof around and be jokesters. And you filmed that in front of an audience, right? Yes, that was a live audience. Usually with TNS, we bring in fans. Um, but that season, because I believe of the location we were shooting, we couldn't have fans on 
on set, which I was really sad about because I had never got to experience like TNS fans watching the the performance. And usually they say it's crazy. Like they all go nuts. Uh, but it was BG and they still had a great time and they did a great job. Uh, I love performing in front of people. That's why I love dancing. And yeah, it was good to be back on a stage again since I had finished my competitive dance time. I know you've done different like conventions over the years. So that's yes. something that you really get to feed off the energy. Um, main attraction, A Troop Dance in season seven. I just love those A Troop dances uh, in Studio A. So take me through that one. Like, is it all continuously one take? Yes, we do it all in one take. Sometimes we'll go back and if they need a specific shot, we'll go back and do a little solo section or, okay, we'll get a duet shot here. But yeah, for the most part, it's all one take. It's usually, if it's an opening dance, if it's a one whole age group dance, it'll be about four minutes, three and a half sometimes. Um, but we get a lot of breaks. Usually it consists of a group section. Uh, we break off into solos, maybe duets, and then maybe a second group section and then the finale. So we do have time to breathe, but very, very long dances. And that's usually when we put a lot of focus in because it's our opening dance. Main attraction was our opening dance, right? I believe so. I think so. To either either the second half of the season or the first half. One of it might other. have been the second half, I'm thinking. I don't know. I yeah. know that um, Sage or Summer wasn't in that one. So maybe second half. Maybe. That would have made I can't remember the, the timeline. Yeah, the timeline but... is confusing. Yeah. Yeah. But it was Uh, such a great dance. And the music, I love when they kind of call back to some other songs. Like they kind of recycle songs, like you mentioned before. But um, it's great to hear them. It's really good music. No, TNS is is very infamous for that and reusing. And it's it's cool because we have our own kind of culture now of of the show. And we can go back and people are going to know this song is from this. So we can can kind of tie it in and sprinkle a little bit of this in here. You know what I mean? So that's always really cool. I really enjoyed our A Troop dance this season as well. Cannonball, love that one. Um, yeah, I think they just keep getting better and better. So Amy Wright is kind of like the lead head choreographer. Uh, she's created so many memorable dances over the years. What's your experience been like working with Amy and her visions? I would not be where I am today as a dancer at all without her. I am the reason, she is the reason that I am on that show. Um, She's the reason I've been on other jobs. She she does a lot of stuff and she yeah, she really cares about her dancers and the people she works with. She's very kind and caring. She always asks what our needs are first. Does this feel comfortable? Do you want to do this? How about that? And she also gives us a lot of opportunities. Like I said, she gave me the chance to help choreograph a piece this year, which was so random. She just walked up to me. She was like, hey, Carter, I love what you did with your solo with Pyro. Do you want to do a piece? And I was like, sure. So she's she's great about giving people opportunities that maybe wouldn't have got them from other people uh yeah like when i she really fought for me in season six to be on this show because there was a toss-up between a couple different people and she was very adamant about me so i would not be where i am today without her she got me through the door with zombies and so many other projects she is a blessing and i love her so much so thank you amy if you're watching this thank you so much we will post and like tag her in it but it's so nice to hear yeah. how supportive she is like there's so many cast members that you know come in and out but i'm sure that you know it's like one big family and she's yes. been on the show since the beginning so she's kind of she knows what she's looking for and it's so great if, if we're a family these. she is a mom for sure if we're the family she is the mother of our family she has nurtured all of us into adults like i said i joined the show when i was 14 and i'm 20 now so she's really seen me grow up which is it's crazy I'm excited for to see where actually Heath goes. Do you think he is in a good place with the team going into the second part of the season? Absolutely not. I think that I think that we're fine. Like we're at a cool place. Um, yeah, but no. And I think that even other people that you know would come into the fold are definitely going to have reservations about Heath as time goes on. So as you know, we meet different characters and uh, new faces they're definitely going to have the reservations about my character. And I understand that, you know, I did betray people the people that were close to me, but I think, I think a troop has forgiven me to some extent because of the spoiler, sorry for the, the, the viewing, the viewership, me getting the viewership up for our show. I think that that definitely made it up to them in some kind of way, but whether or not, whether or not they fully trust me, I, I don't think so. <laughs> so we're talking about former a troop new step inside, right? 
with that yes. group? Okay. Yes. So yeah. he does say that he hasn't fully made his mark on the studio. So, hmm, where does this journey kind of go from here with this kind of lack of trust that might need to be built back up? I guess we'll have to see, but I definitely think that redemption is in order. And in terms of, you know, the cast making their mark, I feel like every other character has been to regionals or nationals or they've done this with their character. They've had a relationship. They've done all these things. For my character, he hasn't really done too much. Like, obviously, he's butt heads with Ozzy and he went to Dance Mania. But even then, it was kind of like I tagged along with them was kind of the energy. You know what I mean? So I think that I think that after this whole situation, Heath has realized that he has bigger goals than just being a dancer at the next step. He wants to really leave a mark there. Um, annoying little brother energy, maybe something like, like that. Yes, uh, uh, for sure. Uh, yeah, I think that. And I think that he really is eager to redeem himself for what he did in the second half. So I think that there's going to be a very big character switch in the next half of the season that you guys are going to see. I do think that he has been always been ambitious ever since he joined the studio. So that's something like a characteristic to kind of latch on to and go further with. I, I feel like the next step has already spoiled what's going to happen with your character because this is public information that's been out there but the cast you have been in cast photos with the new age troop i think at rap um they have been posting dance kind of battle videos let's just assume that you're filming nationals they had you in a jacket emily um ben molly we're all wearing the jackets too so yeah. i think we can maybe assume what's to come but i like what you mentioned that there needs to be redemption for him in some way shape or form uh in terms of nick letting him back not sure how that would go over but i feel like all he has to do is watch pastry punch out and all might be forgiven <laughs> he seems like a very I, forgiving person <laughs> i i agree with you and you know there's that theory that that nick is also heath's dad so maybe he gets a little bit of lead way there i don't know he's gonna hate that i brought this up in that interview as well but it's okay. Yeah, I think that I think that I think it's really cool because my character has always been super ambitious, but I feel like for the wrong reasons. You know, he's always been like very self motivated, and I want to be the best dancer, and I want to do this. But A Troop is a team, and I think that in the second half of the season, he really realizes that that it's not just about him all the time, and that it's great to be competitive, but be competitive with people across from you, not the people that are beside you. I'm sorry. So I think I might have caught wind of this briefly, but that theory, like, do you know how it originated? <laughs> Is there any basis for it? I originated it. <laughs> um, yes, I, I will say that I didn't, but I did. I think that I was on a live stream somewhere and I think I, or maybe, maybe someone just like said it in the comments, like as a joke. And then I just took it and ran with it. And like every live that we did, every stream that we did together, I would drop it in there every behind the scenes that we did, I would sprinkle it in there. I did actually pitch it to the writers at one point. I think they thought I was joking, but I was being completely serious. I was like, wouldn't it be great? Like we've never really had like a, a like a father son. We've had like a mother daughter with Lily and, and her mom, but never a father son. I think it'd be kind of cool. And they were like, ha ha. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> They but, shut uh, yeah, it down I, so quick. Yeah, they did. It was a joke, but I don't know. I think it would have been cool still, so. It's it's funny to think about because as a show that centers around like teenagers um, going into young young adults, but we don't actually really see anyone's parents. Like we don't see a lot of the the home life. A lot of it's at the studio. So I mean, hey, kudos for putting it out there and trying. I mean, I think it is very realistic too. Like as a competitive dancer, I didn't spend a lot of time at home. A lot of my hours were at the dance studio, and that's not saying that I wasn't with my family, but. For a show that focuses around dance, I mean, it would be cool to see some some family interaction, but I think we get to see a lot of their personal life still come out through the show and through their dancing. And we still talk about their families and stuff, which is cool. But yeah, it definitely would be nice to see, you know, some of the parents and the wacky figures some of them could be based on their kids. You know what I mean? So maybe maybe someday. Episode 13 with the group looking up at the chandelier. What do you remember from filming and how are the emotions on set? Very emotional. Uh, as you can imagine, it was, uh, I don't know if that was actually our last scene altogether. No, it definitely was. It was our last scene. Um, but yeah, when we were all there around the chandelier, obviously some of those people had been on that show for years and years. Like Briar had been there since season two and a lot of these other characters have, you know, built their names and 
uh, spent so much time and energy on this show. So I could definitely feel it radiating through everybody else. And it made me very emotional too. And it, I, I was a, it was a moment that I'm very glad I got to share with them. Even though Heath might not be on the, the most perfect ground with the group. Yeah, it did feel yeah. very much like the end of an era um, in, sure. in Studio A. And in terms of the show, it has been becoming more diverse over the past couple of seasons. Uh, pronouns being used, LGBTQ plus representation. We have Melody, Maya, Autumn, just to name a few of the new faces in season eight, bringing their own cultures and styles. Is this something you've been proud to see and be a part of? I think that the next step has always been a very inclusive show. Our cast have always been super diverse. And uh, as time goes on and things change, we've always adjusted to those times. And I think as a, as a show, our goal has always been to if, if a kid is watching the show, they can pick at least one character that they relate to. And that's something that even that I recognized as a young kid when I was watching it, that it was such a diverse group of not only styles of dance, but of people and cultures and ways of life. Um, and I think that it's, it's good that we keep continuing that because I think that it'll inspire kids when they see that on television. They're like, oh, I feel represented. I feel like I can do this too. Uh, the same way I did when, when I watched it. So uh, yeah, I love that. And I think it was, a great idea to diversify us even more. Uh, yeah, I love that idea. Are you a clued shipper? <laughs> I am a clued shipper. Always have been. When when they when they announced that, that was going to be happening, I think everyone was so hyped for it. We were all there for that kiss scene that day. We were all behind the monitor watching it. Um, all erupted in applause after. Yeah, it, it was great, and I think that it was something that needed to be showcased on TV and. Um, just that that love connection, I think, is really great. And those two together is amazing, not only as characters, but Molly and Danny work really well together. So it's great to see them interact. Yeah, and they have such good chemistry on the show. And I love that a lot of these relationships are also built off friendship outside yes. of the show and off camera. Now, in terms of social media, have you ever look to see what people are saying about Heath or maybe gone to YouTube and seen what they've been editing for your character? All the time. Uh, I, I guess much people say to stay away from that. I don't, especially like in the beginning, of course, like people are talking about you, you want to see what they're saying. So yeah, I, I've, I've always been very interested in that. And I take people's notes into consideration for sure. But you have to let not let those a negative comments affect you and but I've always had a, a great number of supporters so I'm very thankful for that as well you have like there's a few accounts on Instagram that are dedicated to you or your character I think someone was doing a birthday countdown for yes. your birthday the other month I mean that's some dedication like there's an edit for a bunch of days leading up to to it yes that's I believe uh TNS Heathcliff uh, so Zoe she was one of my very first fan accounts on season six when I was like 14. So she's been following my career for so long and she's lovely. She supported me so much. I've talked to her a couple of times. Uh, we message each other occasionally. She is, she's amazing. And I can't thank her enough for, for her support and continuing to not only support me, but the show as well. So on YouTube, there's an edit and this is something I've never thought of, but it was Heath and Rochelle and it has like 14,000 mm -hmm. views. I think it was posted a couple of years ago. Um, really? That's an interesting pairing. <laughs> I've never seen that, but it was funny. We joked around with it last season because obviously Ozzy has always had a very big interest in Rochelle. So what would it be like if, if Heath all of a sudden also had an interest in her? That would just make things even worse between us. But there's a scene last season where Rochelle, like there's, we're going on like a massive double date. There's like eight double dates or whatever. And Rochelle's the only person that doesn't have somebody. So like out of, you know, like what, okay, fine. I'll take, I'll take Heathcliff. And I kept play it off like, oh yeah, bring me flowers, picking up by eight, whatever. So I think that was, I, I think, I think I understand why that edit is the way it is because there was a little bit of interaction that way, but I think it was to see maybe in the future, if that would be a budding thing between Heath and Ozzy, but it never turned out that way. You did get to share, I thought a really nice scene with Briar, which was um, in the, episode 13, where he's the one to convince her to come back to step inside, uh, talks to her about, you know, control, how plans change. Was it really nice to share that moment? And do you think it was important that it was Heath to be the one to talk to her? 
Yeah, I, I've known I've known Briar for a very long time, so doing scenes with her always feels very natural, and she's very prepared. And I think it was good that that it was Heath that did it because obviously he needed to gain some kind of self worth and self confidence back after what he had done. So I think that trying to bring one of our most important dancers, one of our strongest dancers back was something that he felt that he had to do, especially because he caused so much of the issues with it, um, with her and Shad and Maria and all that drama. So I think he definitely felt obligated, but he also cares for every person on that team, regardless of what he's done. And um, Rochelle is that team leader and he respects her so much and he knows that they wouldn't be able to do with the show without her. Chad, Shad coming back. You obviously would have seen him when he was on J Troop. So was that kind of cool to see to see him come back? And then, I mean, I have mixed feelings about what happened with that situation because it really was Heath's fault that drove yeah. her yeah. Um, to kick him basically away. And then he obviously went to Maria. So what were your thoughts on everything that happened there? Um, obviously, I'm sure Heath feels bad. I do think it's for the best, though, to be honest with you. I think that I don't know if Rochelle and Shad were right for each other. Like, I know that he he did the crime. and He's going to have to do the time, obviously. But I think that I think there's a better person out there for Rochelle. And hopefully you will see that soon enough. Um, I mean, do you think that that's Ozzy? I mean, they had that moment at the end of that dance. OK, just for if you erase, even though you know what's going to happen in the second half of the season, I mean, that was yeah. the perfect moment there. Because I, it was interesting, as you hear throughout um, the first half of the season, like, Ozzy talks about her, but you know how he had that puppy dog crush on mm -hmm. Rochelle, but it kind of formed into this really beautiful and supportive friendship. So I was kind of thinking, like, hmm, I don't know where that's going, but it was really a really nice duet between the two of them. The the Rishazi fans are crazy. They are crazy. I like that's the most edits I've ever seen in my life is for Rishazi. And I remember when they did like the the Christmas special last season, and they did that duet and they kissed. Everyone freaked out. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely a big Rishazi shipper. Uh, I won't say what happens in the second half, but yeah, their their friendship I think is very valuable to the show and to both of those characters. I think they value each other. A lot, even though Rochelle might not say it. I think that she definitely values Ozzy. We're going to go through some tweets now. So okay. if you could bring out your phone and yeah, Will we'll do. start with the first one. Okay. First tweet is from Cinematica Color, uh, TNS Heath Defender. I like that username. We should defend Heath at all costs. Um, and it says... No, but seriously, can we get a moment like this between Heath and Izzy, please? This little cheek touch after brushing up, brushing off an eyelash in TNS season five, episode four, just has a lot of energy I want to see with Heath Izzy. Well, yeah, I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens in the second half of the season. Obviously, there's, I don't know if I have a scene with Izzy in the first half of the season. Um, but I think there might be some moments like this. Maybe, maybe not, maybe not with, with this person, but there will be some moments. I guess we'll see. I was going to say, I really missed the Heath and Izzy friendship that was kind of built the other yes. season. Is that something that you miss, like having scenes with Renee? Because they bring so much energy to their character. Yes. No, Renee is an amazing actor. Um, and yeah, like when they joined that show, they were just as young as I was when they joined it. So I think it was kind of cool to see, okay, I was in a very similar situation as they are. And yeah, an amazing actor. I love doing scenes, hopefully more in the future. This is from uh, Gazzy underscore Magpie. And it says, at the next step, if Heath and Ozzy aren't together in season eight, I will cry. Now this, I said uh, Rich Ozzy was the biggest ship. I lied. It's actually, it's actually Heath and Ozzy. This, I get more edits about this than any other character on the show. And I believe it's called a crack ship. Like if two characters aren't, that's what it's called. But yeah, I get, I get a lot of questions about this. Um, sa sadly, I'll, I'll spoil it now. We aren't together in season eight. I'm sorry. Um, as much as the viewers might hope, we have some great moments in the first half of the season. Great friendship. But yeah, no, sa sadly, no crack ship for you guys. Uh, my apologies. <laughs> There's like these clips where I think um, they're kind of circling each other, butting heads, and people are like, it's the tension between you I know, and I, I, you and 
<laughs> Do you and Julian talk about this this stuff at all? Oh, a hundred percent. But like I like I said, it's like we've been so close for so long, and it's like a, such a massive joke. And like we'll even do scenes where like at the end of it we'll like go in to kiss each other and everyone will just start laughing because it's such a lot like everybody talks about this all the tns fans talk about it um but i think we we've moved away from like butting heads a lot this season and we are more friends which is really cool not so much frenemies uh but i we definitely based our relationship if you've watched the office a lot of jim and dwight is the energy that we try to bring into those characters except we're both Dwight. So it's very interesting to see how that goes. Um, but yeah, it's kind of where we got that that energy, that push and pull, that Tweedledee, Tweedledum vibe. Um, but yeah, we definitely talked about that situation and how people talk about it all the time. <laughs> What's disappointing is, you know, Ozzy really trusted Heath. He invited him in to do the little sleuthing detective work with him and it was him deceiving him all along. I, I know. And I think that Heath definitely regrets that heavily um and that if he could do it over again he would and i think he's glad that he didn't lose uh ozzy's trust fully in that situation and that at the end they can make up and be on good terms and still respect each other and be friends i think ozzy did appreciate the reverse mulling so that's the ba baby step into yes rebuilding if anybody that. would enjoy the reverse mulling is ozzy for sure so this is from Bile Rodrigo Gracie that one and it goes heat defender for life and then <laughs> a reply to the tweet is I might have to put this as a damn badge because I will defend him till my dying breath I have no idea who this is I don't have Twitter I've never seen this but that's great I appreciate that thank you so much who is this is this is a cinematica same one as the last tweet thank you very much we should defend Heath at all costs um even if he's a mole I think that he's such a, a, yeah, maybe not a great character, but he's very mean sometimes. But maybe that's why he deserves to be defended. He keeps it real. He keeps it a buck. You know what I mean? So, and that we don't have enough of that in the world. So yeah, defend Heath at all costs. I agree. You're like, it's his, you're thinking about it and you're like, maybe he's not the greatest, but maybe that's a redeeming maybe. quality. Yeah, You have yeah, to nobody's justify perfect. and stand up for your character, right? Yeah, yeah. Nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes and... He hasn't made many up until this point. So I think that it's good that he finally makes one and learns from it. Okay. Oh, Rishazi real. There we go. I told you there's, there's one of the accounts right there. So this is from at Rishazi lover with a U and it goes <laughs> in quotes. Heath is going to open up a spying store, but <laughs> I love Rochelle. I remember this line. I remember her practicing the talking head for this. That's so funny. And then the reply is that that was a fun little moment. I love her. I think that's such a great thing about this show is we really do put in like small little things that even for adults would only understand. Like there was a, a scene last season where they were asking me for proof about where I was when the power went out. And I was like, Oh, I was at the, the bakery. And they were like, but you don't have proof. And I was like, actually I have my receipt. I keep it for my tax purposes. Like, you know what I like? Kids aren't going to understand that, but if adults are sitting there watching with their kids, they will, and maybe they'll chuckle. So. Um, I think the I think the show is great for that kind of stuff and kind of sprinkling in little funny moments and comments. I mean, do you? There's always a backup plan for Heath if maybe he's not let back on to I don't know yes. uh, an A troop or let back into the studio. Although I'm not sure how much fun he'd have doing that by himself, knowing that he was forced yeah. to that decision. Yeah, spying store. I don't know. I don't know if he wants to be known as a spy, but I think he's good at it for sure. Obviously, if he if he managed to snitch on every single person on that team and no one even suspected him for a second, or maybe he's just forgettable, one or the other. I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's forgettable. Maybe they're like, oh, there's a shadow there. Hmm, whatever. Yeah, ex right? Exactly, exactly. Maybe I'm not just a good spy. Maybe I'm just unforgettable. Okay, here we go. Last tweet. This is from Asuntis Phantasms. Phantoms. I don't know how to say that first one. I'm a, I apologize. My, I apologize. Sorry. Finish the first half of the next step, season eight. Don't think I've ever cried that much watching this show. The season has been fa fantastic so far. I'm going to miss the team so much. I think that we all felt this way, even as a cast. Um, uh, definitely the viewers, I can only imagine. I was watching those scenes and I was kind of getting a little choked up. and Because it really has been such a, a long run for a lot of these characters. And, you know, it's their life. They've committed so much time and energy to these characters and even 
I think it was really cool that this season when they were asking about, okay, if a certain character is going to leave, maybe how would you like your character to go? What do you want them to do when they're finished? So I think that was really nice of them to kind of let a lot of people pick their own ending to their story, which I really loved. Um, Cause you don't often get to do that in a lot of shows. And I think that this, this season is definitely one of the most emotional there's been. Obviously the show is very dramatic. It's a drama, but I think emotionally there's, there's a lot more to, to bite down on this season. Thank you so much for sharing that tidbit. Um, I think it's interesting that people kind of got to have their own input into their characters yeah. and where they're going. Um, I was going to note that some of them did seem accurate. Like I know, um for Kingston he wanted to go do movies and Noah's mm -hmm. also like wants to do more with his film career uh the one that was interesting that also wasn't really performance related was for Ozzy because he wants to maybe go help with the uncle's what was it like the in the real estate market development and I, yeah I think estate, he's yeah. in business school and so he that is. was really accurate to, <laughs> to his real life yeah they kept it very true to ourselves because um, people don't know this, but when they cast our, our characters, they don't actually cast with a specific personality in mind. Obviously they're looking for like a certain type maybe that they want. Okay. We're looking for this kind of person, this kind of person, but they base the characters largely on ourselves. Um, so even with Ozzy, I remember in the season six when they were auditioning for, sorry, season five when they were auditioning for Ozzy, me and Julian were the two last people for that role. And that if Julian was going to go and do this competition and he was going to be busy, that they were going to, I was going to be the backup. But they felt that Julian matched that more of a awkward, dorky, not, not saying he's dorky at all, but he plays that character very well and it's evident. So um, they do base those characters on ourselves and what's, what, what feels natural to us because I, a lot of the times they don't take actors. Um, they take dancers. Either they're going to take a dancer and make them an actor, or they're going to take an actor and make them a dancer. And I think that's really cool is they've given a lot of artists uh, a chance to improve and, and grow a lot. Like I had never acted before I was on the show. And now that I, I have, I love acting and I, I do it as much as I can. And I audition for as many things as I can. So yeah, they're, they're a great show for that and giving opportunities and, and basing those characters on what's, what's inside of us. I can't even imagine <laughs> you as Ozzy. It's like interesting because when you get to know these characters and you're like, you're perfect as Heath and Julian's mm -hmm. perfect as Ozzy, but it's great that you can kind of grow alongside your characters and the show allows you room to do that. Um, as yeah. we kind of wrap things up, what message do you have for the Next Step fans overall? Having seen the first half of the season, maybe what's to come and maybe already hoping that there's another season after that. I know it's never too early to, to start the campaign once again. Yes, where the hashtags are going to happen soon. Trust me, I think I think Miles already has one. But as a general message, I hope you don't heath too much for what he's done in the first half. And hopefully you can forgive him in the second half. Um, but also, thank you so much to all the fans that have supported us for years. This is our eighth season and some of you guys have been watching all the way through. Um, thank you. Yeah. For supporting, for, for continuing to, to give us a platform to do what we want to do and showcase dance on a, on a high level, which isn't very often shown in TV and film. So, and I hope, hopefully you guys take away some stuff from our characters and learn stuff from our mistakes and what we do. And, and hopefully you can relate to us in some way, but thank you so much for your continued support. And we love you so much. Now, what's up next for you? Are there any upcoming projects that you can share? Nothing that I can talk about, um, but some NDAs. fun dance videos. <laughs> and yes, some quiet stuff. But um, what's going on right now, you can watch Zombies 3 on, on Disney+. Plus. Um, actually, what day is it today? The 9th. Uh, Bring It On, Cheer or Die, a movie I just did, came out yesterday on the Sci-Fi channel. You can also watch it on YouTube. You can rent it on YouTube. Um, I have some dance videos coming out in the next couple of weeks. So be on the lookout for that on my Instagram. And then, yeah, some, some fun stuff happening this year that you have to keep your eyes peeled for. And of course, the second half of the season, which we don't know when it's yes. going to come out yet. Do you have any idea? I don't. To be honest, we're definitely left in the dark about a lot of this stuff, too. Uh, I didn't even like the release date changed and nobody told me. So I was posting about it like it had come out and it was like, it's not out yet, Carter. I was like, oh, OK, my bad. 
Um, You'll find out when the, the dark. when the world knows. Kind of yeah, thing. when you guys know, I will also know. So. And there's some great fan accounts that keep you updated. I think it's like yes. there's a Latin America. Atem yes american fan account and they are on the ball with all this Everything. content premiere dates times what channels so i think yeah. those accounts are so important for these fan bases we have we have the best fans and for them to stick with us for so long and, and continue to support us and want more and more and more is is something that you don't see very often especially in tv um yeah it's it's created such like a a loving group of fans like they genuinely love the show and i think it's amazing to see because you don't see that super often especially with a show that's been around for eight seasons and also the fact that they support the actors and their other projects as well yes. which is incredible they, they care about us as as individuals which is really nice to see as well i have one more question for you our signature question if you could be any ice cream flavor which would you be and why oh that's crazy. I would say I'm going to pick, no, I'll pick one. I'll pick one. I'll pick mint chocolate chip. I don't know if, if that's a basic one or something pe people pick a lot, but I don't know. I think that there, I definitely have two contrasting personalities. I can be either be, you know, super sweet or not, not, not sweet, but you know, opposite of that. Sometimes if I don't have my coffee in the morning, you might want to stay away from me for a bit um hangriness you know things like that so i think the refreshing of the mint and then the bitterness of the chocolate definitely sums up my my personality i love that explanation um, yeah. that's all i have for you thank you so much carter for taking the time to chat awesome thank you so much it was amazing to talk with you guys of course make sure to catch carter in the next step season eight first part is out now on ytv in canada cbbc in the uk more coming soon from Carter and we will see you next time.